Welcome back geometry students and thank you for tuning in to my Hanson Math YouTube channel. Today we're going to focus on a specific quadrilateral or four-sided two-dimensional figure and that is to me the granddaddy of all quadrilaterals, the good old parallelogram. And its name tips us off more than anything. Parallel is right in its name. So if there was no parallel nature to this, boy that would be sad, that would be a misnomer indeed. But this thing was aptly named, which brings us to property one. A parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. So parallel has nothing to do with length, but everything to do to slope. So if you can see that the left side is running in the same direction as the right side, so they're parallel, that is denoted with an arrowhead. So if I have an arrowhead here, I put a single arrowhead there, that shows you that this pair is parallel or running in the same direction the same slope, they will never ever intersect. But it's not one pair of parallel sides, it's both pairs of parallel sides. So we can also say that the top is parallel to the bottom. And since I used single arrowheads for the left and right pair, now I use double arrowheads for the top and bottom pair. Okay, let me actually, I can do that a little bit better that signifies that that is the parallel set, okay? Double arrowheads. All right, so that is what is meant by opposite sides are parallel, so check. On to property two, opposite sides are congruent, okay? So congruent now speaks to length, that means they have an equal length, Okay, so opposite sides. So that means that the left here is the same length as the right. And that's indicated by putting in a tick mark. So if you see a tick mark there and a tick mark there, that means that these two sides have the same length. If you want a more tangible example, if I say that this side is eight centimeters, the right side would also have to be eight centimeters. That is what's meant by opposite sides are congruent. But in a parallelogram, it's not one pair, it's both pairs. So the left has the same length as the right, and the top has the same length as the bottom. So I'm gonna give that two tick marks because it's a different length than the other pair. And let's see, we'll say that that is uh, 14 units, and this is 14 units, just to have a concrete example. So that is what's meant by opposite sides are congruent or have the same length. So we've got that, check. Okay, property three, opposite angles are congruent. So by opposite angles, they mean the following. If we focus our attention in on this angle here, and let's say that that is 70 degrees, the opposite angle over in this corner has to have the same measure 70 degrees, they have to be the same. And the same is true about the other pair. The other pair is not the same angle. In fact, we'll learn about that in step four. Uh, it's going to be a different sized angle, but having said that, we know that this angle will be the same measure as this angle. So if this is say 110 degrees, this opposite angle will also be 110 degrees, okay? So please make sure you're taking good notes on this as this will be very helpful moving forward. This is what's meant by opposite angles are congruent or the same measure, check. Okay, that brings us to step four, which is consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles means that they are in a straight path along a side. So if I start here and go here, I'm going to go through a 70 degree angle and a 110 degree angle. Those are consecutive because they're in a line. Supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees. And if you look in my example, it's true to that. 70 plus 110 is 180. Now, we also have consecutive angles this way. So if you go from 110 to 70, they're supplementary, 110 plus 70 is 180. If you go from 70 to this 110, you get your 180. And if you go from 110 to 70, 
you get your 180. So if you go in a straight path along the outside perimeter of the parallelogram, you always get supplementary or a sum of 180 degree angles. So check, and that brings us to our last property, property number five, the diagonals bisect each other. So think of bi as two, like bicycle, and sect like sections. So it means the bisect, the uh, diagonals chop each other into two equal sections. They chop each other in half. So the diagonals go from corner to opposite corner through the shape. So this is a diagonal in light blue, and this is a diagonal in dark blue. And these things chop each other in half. So this part here, which I'll give three tick marks. Why three? Because we already used a single and a double. So from here to here is the same length as from here to here. So if you want a concrete example, if this is uh, nine centimeters, this would also have to be nine. All right, and the other, the light blue diagonal, that also gets chopped in half. So whatever this length is, it's the same over here. I'll use four tick marks. I know this is getting messy, but just as an example, if this was five centimeters from here to the middle, then it would also have to be five centimeters from the middle to the corner. That's what it means by the diagonals bisect each other. They chop each other in half. So that is a little crash course in properties of the parallelogram. So now we'll see uh, how the rubber meets the road and actually try some of this in practice. So hang tight as we tra transition to example one below. All right, so example one says complete each statement regarding the parallelogram below. So I would make a sketch of this parallelogram over here and then write down A, B, C, D, E. So you have some uh, examples for yourself. Part A says name the parallelogram. So I'm going to name the parallelogram with the four corner vertices. And you can name it you, in any order as long as you go in a counterclockwise or clockwise manner. So if I start here, I'm gonna call it A, D, C, B capital A, D, C, B, and that is with no commas or no spaces, just the capital letters, all four of them together. Okay, next we'll move on to part B. It says segment AB, so let's identify that in the picture. AB is the right side. Okay, parallel, train tracks, this is the parallel symbol. All right, so these two lines mean parallel. So AB is parallel to what? The left is parallel to, or the right is parallel to the left. So AB would be parallel to CD and put a segment over it because it has a definitive start and stop endpoints between C and D. Okay, I'm gonna erase that to keep things clean. Moving on to part C. DA, well, let's see where that is. DA is the top. So we've got DA. It's congruent or has the same measure as what? Well, the top has to have the same measure as the bottom, opposite sides. So we could call that CB or BC, same thing. The order doesn't matter. So capital letters, no commas between them, and bar over the top means segment. Okay. So there's that one. All right, which brings us to part D. Part D says angle CDA is congruent or the same measure as what? So the middle letter is a tip off to where the vertex point is, but I'm gonna trace it out in a straight path, C to D and D to A. So C to D and then D to A. Okay, that is indicating the vertex D, corner D, which is here. So we learned back on the previous example that opposite angles are congruent. So CDA is congruent to this guy here, okay, angle B, but I'm gonna use the three letter naming. So I can call it 
C to B to A, or I can call it A, B, C, but B has to be in the middle. The pointy, pointy vertex, pointy corner of the angle has to be in the middle. So again, you could call it ABC or CBA. I'm gonna call it angle symbol ABC. All right, and lastly, we will look at part E. Part E says DE, which is going through the shape. So that is part of the diagonal. Okay, that's part of the diagonal. DE is congruent to what? Well, we learned on the other slide that the diagonals bisect each other. So D to E is the same length as E to B. All right, because this is kind of like a midpoint of that diagonal. So DE is congruent to BE because the diagonals bisect each other. So that is a little bit of work on using the naming conventions for parallelograms. So I hope that helps you guys. And we will wrap up this video with examples two, three, and four, finding missing angles. So hang tight. Okay, so in example two, we have a picture of a parallelogram and you don't have to assume it's a parallelogram. You are told as much right here. So find all the missing variables. So in number two, we need to find the measures of Z, X, and Y. How will we do that? Well, look at your notes and use any property you can. For example, opposite angles are congruent. So if this is 80 degrees here, X has to be 80 degrees because they're opposite angles. And we also learned that consecutive angles are supplementary. So if I go in a straight line here, uh, they have to add to 180. So if I have 80, then Z has to be 100, because if not, these would not add up to 180. Notice that if you go this way, they also add up to 180. So uh, with that said, you can also go this way, okay? So then 80 plus what gives you 180? 100, double check it. Opposite angles are congruent. Yep, 100 and 100. And then finally, how do you find Y, which is on the exterior of the parallelogram? Well, don't forget a linear pair or supplementary angles or think of a straight line must always equal 180. So 180 is this linear pair or supplementary pair. And we already have 100 right here. So 180 minus 100 leaves you with 80. So Y has to be worth 80 degrees because these two here must be supplementary. So we have found all the missing variables in number two. So we will press on to number three. All right, so again, you can start anywhere you want. You have to be a detective. So I would do the following. Uh, let's see, we have 120 degrees here. So that has to be the case for the opposite corner. So that means that Z has to be 120. Opposite angles are congruent. Um, what do we know about consecutive angles? So these angles going this way, so that means this one plus this whole corner has to equal 180. So I can say we have 120 degrees plus 35 plus, I don't know this little bit right here, X. All of them together have to equal 180. So 120 and 35 is 155 plus X equals 180 minus 155. So whatever 180 minus 155 is, that will be X. 180 minus 55 is 25. So X is no longer unknown. X is worth 25 degrees. So I will put that in the picture. All right. So now we can use a property that opposite angles are congruent. So if you have 35 degrees here, that flops over across the diagonal to Y. So that's 35. I know you were, were not asked this, but you can take 25 degrees and flop that over here. 
So really you have two clone triangles that are rotated around, okay? So you have two congruent triangles that are rotated around. And lastly, is there anything lastly? I think we got it. X is 25 degrees, Y is 35 degrees, and Z is 120, all right? So we cooked number three, so that leaves us without further ado to finish off number four. So where can we start with this one? Well, uh, we discussed in the previous example that um, opposite angles are congruent. So if you have 30 degrees here, you have 30 degrees here on the opposite side of the figure crossing the diagonal. So X would have to be 30 degrees. Uh, I also see a straight line here or a linear pair. So I know that 70 and Z as a team have to make a um, 180. So 180 take away 70 is 110. Okay, so that's 110. All right. And I also know that I have vertical angles. So if I have 110 here, I have 110 on the other side. Also note that that checks out that these are in a straight line. So 70 plus 110 is 180. Everything checks out. So then finally, how do we find the measure of angle Y? Well, don't forget to always be on the lookout for a triangle. So here you have a triangle that I'll put in pink. And remember that triangles always equal 180 degrees. So we've got 100 degrees here. This angle is 30 degrees plus X, or not, so actually Y, plus Y equals the magic number of 180, the interior angle sum of a triangle. So let's see, I've got 110 plus 30, that's 140. So 140 plus what gives me 180? So I need another 40 degrees. So Y is 40 degrees. So Please be on the lookout for triangles, the three angles in the interior, sum to 180, a linear pair of two angles adjacent in a straight line equal 180, and then use vertical angles. You got to have everything in the mix now and use the properties that we've outlined here for parallelograms, as well as the left has the same length as the right and the top has the same length as the bottom. So. Uh, good luck to you guys in your studies of parallelograms. I hope this is a step in the right direction and um, keep using my YouTube channel as well as all the fine teachers out there in YouTube land. So thank you very much. Good luck in your studies and have a great day.